I'm Rhett. And I'm Brandon. And we're, we're the, the House Dads. Dads. Because we're dads who sell houses. But we're also husbands, business owners, sports freaks, Christians. Friends, marketing nerds, TV show bingers, and so many more things. Like so many of you, we're just trying to do it all. We're trying to do it well. And that's what we're here to talk about. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the House Dads podcast. You're in for a treat today. We have a good friend. Uh, we've uh, got a fun story to put together, kind of yeah. how we've met. Um, but Logan Torrance is here. Logan, thanks for being here. Yeah, I'm excited. Yeah, so what I like about kind of the last couple ones that we've shot is for the audience, for those of you who don't know Logan, and then, uh, you know, for Rhett, Rhett doesn't know Logan, Rhett didn't know Sam. And so we're all kind of doing this together, almost as if we planned it, where I've got some history with Logan, Rhett doesn't. And so he'll be able to ask some questions that may be different than the questions that I ask. For sure. So it's going to be fun. Some of the best interviews are curiosity standpoint. Yeah, you know? exactly. If you know everything, it's not, yeah. you can't pick the brain very it, well. Exactly. And that's what it's all about. So, you know, I can say a lot of positive things about Logan. He, uh, I hope so. Glad to hear. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's hard to kind of narrow it down to what I really just want to share. Oh, but wow. we'll go back to where we first kind of met. And, and he didn't even remember this. So maybe it was just a fever dream and I don't even remember it happened. But uh, one of my good buddies, one of my best friends, Brennan, is your cousin. Yep. Brennan and, Hood? No, not oh, Brennan Hood. That sorry, would have been Brennan. a weird connection. Sorry. But no, uh, <laughs> my buddy Brennan is your cousin. And at his graduation party in high school, we played a game of water basketball, right? And uh, Logan may get into this later, but he went to Albany. Albany, right? Yep. Yeah. Went to Albany. We we all went to Denham. And so we had a Denham versus Albany Ooh. a water basketball game. Nice. Not, I don't remember who won. We were wish yeah, we for could some reason I had like a crew with me. Like, yeah, I brought like sure. the people that didn't know Brennan. But see, that was the connection because like David Foster was there. Yeah. A couple other guys. Like, why did I bring my friends to my cousins <laughs> like graduate? <laughs> I don't know. But then we went full circle to where at Southeastern we had a lot of the same yep. connections and things like that. Um, so we knew a little bit of each other in college, but really started to connect through church and things like yeah. that years down the road. And uh, through that, you and I got to spend some more time together. He was a guest speaker at uh, our student conference and then spoke at our church camp and just got to spend time doing life together and things like that. And what I admire the most about who you are is your authenticity. Oh, I appreciate that. You know, like just, uh, you know, I think in the different circles that you kind of find yourself in, it's like... You can get people that put up a little bit of facade and stuff, and it's like, uh, you know, just just trying to be somebody that they're not. And so yeah. I just always have appreciated from the moment that I met you is that it's just been authentic and real. And I'll tell you from, like, anybody that you've spoken to, you're a great communicator. We'll get into this more. But they get that when you communicate, too, that, like, there's not really, like, a, a hidden agenda or something. Like, hey, I'm here. This is what I've got to bring. And that authenticity carries in a lot of different oh, things. It means a lot. Yeah, man. Appreciate well, that. So glad you're here. Um, we're going to get into a lot of more about how that authenticity is, you know, not only in your life and in your family and your ministry and your businesses, all that different stuff. But I think it's important for you to get some more background on who yeah, is. Who am I? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Who's Brandon, this guy? Brandon said you would be coming on. I was like, I don't know. Uh, I don't think I've, I've met him before. And he mentioned Luma, which we'll get into. I was <laughs> like, oh, I've heard of Luma. Yeah. So I love that connection. I'm excited to hear about that story and what you got going on there. Um, I do want to give a disclaimer to our listeners. This is the first episode we have headphones. Um, <laughs> I'm glad you said it. I'm glad you said Brandon, it. Brandon, uh, you know, a little behind the scenes. Brandon's a little, he's a little frazzled I'm right tripping now. out a little bit. He's a little, it's something new, but if you go listen to one of our past episodes on embracing change, embracing growth. Yeah. That's going to be. I feel like I can audibly hear my intrusive thoughts, <laughs> like the thoughts that used to be silent. Look, like you can, can hear this hear little tap. Huh? It feels professional. Though, it does. You know? If you are hearing what we hear, yeah, we're yeah, we're we're, we're, we're good. I'll loosen up. I'll be there. Yeah, I'll get but uh, yes, disclaimer: we do look a little different. But hey, we're we're constantly changing and figuring things out. But back to Logan. Yeah, man, we just want to kind of hear uh, and the listeners as well hear your story. Tell a bit. Tell us a little bit about who you who you are, your upbringing, anything you feel context worthy is worth knowing. Um, from coming out of the womb. Ready, go. <laughs> Kidding. Well, there I was, 1991. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll give, you a, I'll give you kind of a broad broad background, Please. and then yeah. if, you know, if we want to dive in anywhere, we can. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'm a, I, I'll say my age first. I'm 32. I say that because I was meeting with a guy last week, and uh, we've been talking for like an hour, and he's like, can I ask you a question? <laughs> How old are you? I'm 32. He's like, I would not have thought you were no, 32. I yeah. um, he's like, I thought you were much younger. And I was like, no, I got kids and mortgage and stuff. And so a yeah. mustache. Mustache. Yeah, the, the mustache is partially 
so that I don't look like I'm <laughs> preteen. But yeah, um, I'm 32. Um, I grew up down the road in Albany. Um, I was raised by my grandmother. Uh, fun fact, because we're at the table, I was born without fingers on my hand. So that like, I'll know people for like weeks at a time and they'll be like, well, oh my God. <laughs> like I just, out. Yeah. Huh? so uh, that's, um, that's an interesting thing. I'm like, what's, you know, not a lot of people yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. have one hand. There you bring it up. Yeah. yeah. I, uh, so yeah, I grew up, grew up down the road in Albany. Um, had a, I would say a non-traditional home life, you know, growing up with my grand, my grandmother. Um, my, I, I had a, a good relationship with my parents for, um, my younger years. And then, um, as I got older, that kind of distance, and then I reconnected with my mom and then I, I, she tragically passed away when I was in high school mm-hmm. and, um, I have an incredible relationship with my dad now, years later, talk to him every day. Um, but yeah, it's just, uh, it's been, it's been an interesting life, yeah. you know? Yeah. And, uh, I, I know I mentioned this before we, we started up, but I, I went to Southeastern and while I was at Southeastern, I was pursuing kind of pre-nursing school is when I first had my like encounter with the Lord Mm -hmm. and was really ready to like drop out of college and go like whatever you do to be in ministry. That's what I wanted to do. And, um, ended up not doing that, ended up finishing my degree. So I am a technically a registered nurse. Right. Um, nice. Keep up my license every year. I don't do just on some classes yeah. online, but technically it's a flex. Yeah. I just like one. I'm like, <laughs> so I, it was too much money to not keep <laughs> so, this. Just, so what does that look like? You have to do like continuing education like we do in real estate. Every yeah. It's kind of scary how little I have to do <laughs> and still be considered an RN. <laughs> Wait a minute. Yeah. So it's, yeah, it's some classes on online. So if and, things pop off on an airplane and like, we need a nurse. Are you like, yeah, no, I, I feel like <laughs> I, I would give it a shot. Yeah. I don't well, know. Tell me what's going on first for yeah. <laughs> It's crazy because people know that. So that anytime anything happens, like yet, yesterday, that one of our, our people on our staff, they're having some health stuff and they're like, Logan, you're a nurse. You, uh, and I'm like, uh, it's been breaks. a few years. I'm like, I'm like the gallbladder. <laughs> Where is that? Yeah. What does that do? Um, it's awesome. But yeah, I didn't, I ended up finishing my degree and then was worked in the hospital for less than a year when um, the, the church that, I, that I'm still at, the mission in Hammond, they had an opening at the youth pastor position that was, that was coming up and, um, invited me on, on, on the staff. And I've been on staff there since 2016 was a youth pastor for a few years, then did youth and young adults for a few years. And now just young adults also oversee our groups, like our small groups. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so, yeah, that's, it's a little bit of my work history, personal life. Um, and then I know that we probably get into it, but then two years ago we opened up Luma. Right. And, uh, and that's been a journey that's been really cool. And, um, but yeah. Yeah. It's pretty incredible, man. I think, uh, I've been able to just see just a little bit of that. Like even when we were having conversations to have you come speak and stuff, it was early on about, Hey, we're exploring financing options and how to get yeah. into Luma and all this different <laughs> stuff. And then the next time we meet, we're like having coffee and you're like trying to get the place open, but even step it back a little bit more. Tell us a little bit about how you met your wife. Yeah, that's it, that that part of it, your family dynamic, all that thing. Yeah, where you at today with that. Yeah, I met her actually at a young adult service. Um, cool. at That now we lead, we lead the young adult <laughs> service, but we met at at the young adult service cool. it, when it was still on campus at Southeastern. She had gotten invited by uh, a friend that she went to LSU, and so somebody invited her. And she, she walked in that night and it's kind of like one of those things where it's like when the, when there's like a new girl at school, you yeah, know? Yeah. like she walked in and I immediately, like I'm like grabbing people. I'm like, who's that? Who's yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. All the guys were like, who's, who's the girl? Yeah. And, um, and what, it was one of my friends that she had invited her and I was like, the, and if you don't know, my wife's taller than me. She's like almost six feet. Right. And I'm, you know, I'm like five, 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 six. <laughs> so the first thing I asked, I was like, do you know if she dates short guys? <laughs> and, uh, she's like, she, she hasn't oh, yet. Yeah. And I was like, that's all, first. Yeah, this is always a first. So yes, sir. we, uh, we had service <laughs> that night and then I was like a prayer partner at the end. So I was at the front, but we had steps. Uh-huh. So I was on like the, I was like on the steps. Uh, so then they introduced me to her. And so I'm like, eye level. Yeah. And, uh, so I'm like, I have to, I have to throw everything that I have out right now <laughs> before she knows my height. So I'm like, awesome. I'm spitting my game. And, yeah. uh, and so we talked for a little bit and everybody was going out to eat after service. And she, um, <laughs> and I had a, I had a big nursing exam the next, the next morning that I needed to go study for. And she's like, Oh, are you going to eat with everybody? I was like, oh, I have a test. And she's like, you should definitely come. And I'm like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> you're like, yeah. You're like, all right. Yep. So I go out, we go out and eat <laughs> canes and, uh, mm, afterwards nice I'm walking out and I'm like, Hey, I'm, you know, could, 
can I get your phone number? I would love to take you to lunch next week. And uh, I forget her name. Oh, yes. oh, nice. And so there's this moment where I'm like putting her her number in my phone and I thought I was going to be slick yeah, yeah, yeah. and and it's kind of segue. So I was like, oh, how do you spell your name? And she's like, how do you think? Oh, oh. nice. <laughs> Turn it back on. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I, I had forgotten her name, but there was like a name in my head for some reason that I thought it was. And uh, so I was like... M <laughs> and she's like it it's Shelby and I was like oh I was like you know I was like oh I'm and I like French. spelled it spelled it real quick and I was like like S H E L B Y and she's like yeah and I was like yeah okay I got it and she's like okay <laughs> yeah. tall Kane's girl <laughs> so I like I walk away and my buddy's at his car and he's like and I was like I got it but I forgot her name <laughs> isn't so, it so awesome we don't have to do that anymore that's it an is. exhausting time of life <laughs> yeah. like oh, yeah, dating's so different now uh, it like, is. when I'm talking to uh, you know people in college I'm like wow you have no idea mm-hmm. so single friends now I mean there's the apps there's like people don't want to get on the apps but they do want to get on the apps and like ah oh, I don't I'm so glad we I don't miss that. that whatsoever Not you can all. just think out your your approach yes. you know, yeah. for as long as you need and send it you yes. know, via text. Right. Right. So yeah, we, uh, obviously we ended up, you know, I ended up pursuing her. We got married and we have three beautiful babies. Um, love, love being a dad's the best job in the world. Uh, our oldest Junie, she's four. She'll be five in November. We had him like rapid yeah, fire. I didn't waste any time. Yeah, it was, cr- yeah, it's pretty crazy. Yeah. So Junie's four <laughs> Wilder will be three. Um, in May, and then our youngest Cooper, she's a year and a half, and so yeah, it was. You are in the thick of it, brother. Back to back to back. Yeah. You, yeah, yeah. Cooper just like in the last two months started sleeping through the night, so I feel like now we're at like a. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah. Still, it doesn't seem good. as impossible. Yeah. Um, I was gonna talked, ask. Okay, yeah. yeah, I was gonna say I was gonna ask you the question: What's the been the hardest shift for you? One, uh, like two to one three. Or two, two but, to three. Two to three. Yeah. <laughs> Hands down. Yeah. Same. Here we go. <laughs> you ready, Brandon? <laughs> yeah. It was. Uh, and people told me that too. And yeah. I, I felt like we, like not to brag, like I feel like we were, we were, we were did so good one to two. Yeah. I was like, it can't be that much different. And uh, it was, yeah, yeah. Well, it was definitely that much different. I'm bracing for it. By the time this drops, we may already have number three here. You know, so that's <laughs> yeah. pretty wild. That's but, what Shelby yeah. was telling me. She's like, Courtney's about to have a baby. I know, like anytime. So it's wild that, uh, you know, I like the parallel too, that all three of us have yeah. three. You know, the thing that's different is I made sure, or I, not, I will make sure, I said, listen, after this, it's going to be medically impossible for the boy <laughs> to have another child. But me and Logan had lunch the other day. He's like, hey, man. Yeah, I don't, don't, know, don't, if, don't, I don't know if we're done. Don't count we'll it see. out. So, do, is it, well, how, do you have, um, what are the genders? So we have two girls, a uh, six-year-old, four-year-old, and then uh, a boy who's five months coming up here in a few days. Yeah. So, were you, I don't know how it was for you. I Juniper is our oldest, and... I was like, if I can just have all girls, I could have a dozen. Like I can just, we can never stop. <laughs> yeah. And uh, and so when we found out Wilder, our our middle, our boy in the middle was going to be a boy, I was like a little freaked out. Uh-huh. Um, I was like, man, I just didn't know how it was going to be because yeah. like, you, you know how you love like a little girl. Oh, I was yeah. like, can I love a little boy the uh, same? Dude, and uh, same. I cannot imagine my life without my yes. little boy. Like he's like. Yep. I joke sometimes when I'm like, he's my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Whenever we, we, we have two girls, so obviously I'm like, look, we have finished this out with girls. I'll be thrilled. I love being a girl dad. And then with the boy, I'm like, am I going to be different? Am I going to be like, all right, go get a job. Out the womb and like being a little more tough love. But no, man, it's, yep. it's been incredible. Yep. Yeah. Well, I, I, we may go, we may jump around a little bit here, but I'd like to hear a little bit more about like what a normal week looks like for you now. And then maybe after that, we'll kind of, check in on like the story of Luma yeah. separate yeah. from that. But what's, what's a normal week look like with all your different demands and places you're pulled right now? Yeah, it looks, um, it, it changes, you know, season to season. But right now, um, I thankfully just have really great, you know, it's, it's, it's an interesting dynamic when you, like I own a business, so I am someone's boss, right. but then I also have another job where, where I oh, also have yeah. a boss. And so, um, thankfully, I have a really great boss right. and uh, right. pastor Devin and um, but a normal week for me looks like a little combination. I like to do a lot of ministry work at the coffee shop when I can. Right. Um, one, I just find that I don't like being just like stuck kind of distant from people. Yeah. You know, like when we're, if we're working from the church, I prefer to work closer to downtown. Right. Um, just, I feel like it just, it opens you up to, 
it just reminds you what it's all about. Like it's all about people. And, uh, and so it's like, I get really claustrophobic when I have to work somewhere closed in. Right. Um, and so I'll do a combination. I'll work at our, our church, our downtown office for the church also in Luma. And I have meetings sprinkled in for both. Like I meet with a lot of people for my, you know, my, my job with the church, Mm -hmm. you know, whether that be just doing life together or maybe it's, you know, it's mentoring, whatever that looks like. Got multiple meetings like that every week. And then, also have some some Luma meetings sprinkled in with my team leads and 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 things like that, but it it really is pretty symbiotic, you know. Yeah, yeah. I may be at the 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 coffee shop meeting with someone, and then my wife and kids walk in, so it's like dad, you know, it's like dad <laughs> it's mode, and so it's like it's been yeah. beautiful navigating. Um, I think part of owning a job is just it has shown me how much in the church we make this great divide between the secular and the, oh, yeah. yep. you know, in ministry. Yep. And, um, and it's just like, they're not, they're not separate. That's right. You know, they're just, they're, they're the same, That's right. but we just make them so separate. Yeah, and so right. it's really cool meshing those two. I love yeah. that. You and know? I think you're speaking to something that we talk about, like even for folks who can't relate to having a formal job in ministry is that, they have all these different areas of their lives that feel so segmented mm-hmm. and separate. Oh, my home life's separate from my work life. Mm-hmm. But it's kind of, you know, like that rising tide in your life rises all the boats in your life yeah. to where it's like you can be the dad, you can be the businessman, you could be the employee, right. all in the same yeah. place. And, I and, love that. and the Lord's in all of it, yes. you know? Right. And uh, so it's, it's something I feel like a lot of people that have been in like vocational ministry and then step into like a, a different career you just have like eyes Mm -hmm. so much and I'm sure you've experienced it too. Mm -hmm. It's like, Oh, I thought I would be doing a lot less ministry, but um, it just looks different. It's yeah. a different type of ministry. hundred percent. I'm sure it's easy to get in a bubble, right? Yeah. You're mm-hmm. in a, just a church. You're like, this is my, just, this is what world the world is or like the people that I'm interacting with, but it's yeah. not. Yeah. That's what I'm so thankful for is that because of our experience in real estate and things like that and in any business, but you know, especially in our career, dealing with people in the largest financial purchase they'll ever make yeah. is like, yes, you know, yeah. we're speaking to the real estate for a minute, but it's like, yes, we're helping people buy and sell houses, but it's so much more than that. Yeah. And regardless of your field, I think it's easy to get numb yeah. to other places and yeah. other things, what you're doing. But even just like you said, surrounding yourself with people like, hey, the reason we do anything that we do yeah. is because of the people in our life. Yeah. yeah. So that's a big point. It's big. Well, if you're cool with it, I'd love to hear the Luma story of yeah. like, I mean, you saying you, you went to nursing school <laughs> yeah. and ministry and I was like, oh, cool. I'm going to be a business owner now. And it's funny because I feel like there's, I enjoy coffee. Yeah. I wouldn't say I'm a coffee snob. but No, I, I would compared okay. to me. We yeah. sat down like the first time and I was like, I don't know. And he's got like a special order and stuff. Okay. So. Not like a Starbucks special order, but, uh, but either way, I feel like with people that like coffee, they always have kind of this pipe dream. It'd be cool to like own a coffee yeah. shop. Yep. Right. So I would love to hear the story yeah. of the inception of it. And it's uh, I love, I love telling the story of Luma and um, it really started off as like, you know, it's like, I don't know if you, I, I suffer from this. Like when I get into something, I like really get into mm-hmm. it. And, uh, but yeah, it really started me and um, I, me and my wife co own it with our best friends, Devin and Catherine and me and Devin were friends before I even met my wife. Like we were just friends in, in the college ministry mm-hmm. and we took a, a I guess like a, we took a bro trip one December, me, Devin and our friend Israel to, yeah. we, we were going to Chicago, but we stopped in Nashville and stayed with one of Israel's friends, um, Robbie. He's like a famous photographer, uh, Robbie Klein, shout out. Shout um, out. <laughs> he just moved back to Hammond. He's opening up a studio in Hammond. So oh, it's cool. like, nice. it feels like Hammond's having a renaissance right now. It, man, it is. Yeah. That may it's, be a, yeah. another conversation, but it's cool. I have a lot of, yeah. On, um, but yeah, we stopped in Nashville and he was like bringing us all to these like really incredible coffee shops. And Did I you had a barista parlor, barista parlor. Yeah. We went to crema. We went just, he took us to, there was like the, the Trinity and okay. it was like crema barista parlor and frothy monkey at the time. Yeah. There's probably a dozen now. Yeah. And it was like a paradigm shift because I had never been in a, like a, a coffee space like that, but that was also like a creative space. Yeah. I'd never been in a coffee shop that was anything other than like a Starbucks PJs. or a PJs. Yeah. Yeah. And so it was this space where people were like working and doing life. The coffee actually tasted good, yeah. like black, you know, it was like, and so 
it was just crazy. And we're like, this is awesome. We went to Chicago, went to some more coffee shops and we're just like, this is incredible. Me, I was a barista at Starbucks for five years through, that was like my college job. Gotcha. You know, that's what I did. And so that's where I started to drink more coffee. Mm -hmm. But that trip is where I really started to appreciate coffee and know that there was this whole world of coffee that people, it was like red pill, blue pill. Yeah. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is like a rabbit hole. So Um, fast, fast forward a little bit, Devin and Catherine, they meet, they get married. They go go on their honeymoon to Nashville. They do the same thing. Go to all these coffee shops. They're driving back from their honeymoon. And Catherine's like, man, what if we open up a coffee shop? (laughs) And, uh, Devin's like, that would be cool. They start brainstorming thinking about Devin comes up with a name on that road trip back from Nashville. Uh He's like, uh, illuminate, illuminate the word illuminate. And then he's like, Luma, I like it. Like it's, it's, it's soft on the, you know, right. it's, it's not a harsh word. So they get back, we go to the farmer's market that Saturday and they're like, Hey, we got a crazy idea. What if we start a coffee shop? And, um, and we're like, heck yeah, let's do it. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, we, we compliment each other so well, mm-hmm. um, as business partners, like when I, I'm like more like, I they call me the realist. I'm like the, <laughs> like the prop, like what everything that can go wrong. Let me think of it, yeah, yeah. you know, before it happens. And, uh, they're, they're so, they're so dream and vision yeah. oriented, which I have a little bit of both of those. Sure. But so like, for instance, the first thing I did was like, get on Amazon and like buy some, like how to start a business book or something like that. You know, <laughs> yeah. and I was like, all right, what do we not know? What yeah, do we yeah. need to know that we don't know? Right. And, uh, we were just so zealous. Like we started, we, we left the farmer's market and started looking at properties, which was wow. like, we had no business. Yeah, yeah. We, we had no anything. We didn't have an LLC. We didn't have no nothing. nothing. Yeah. And, um, and so Kat had gotten Devin this little popcorn coffee roaster. Mm-hmm. And it's basically like the most entry level coffee roaster there is. It's like, you ever seen those like whirly pop where yeah. you like turn it? You can just roast coffee on one of those on wow. the stove. So we did that in uh, at our me and my wife's first little rent house. Smoked the place out, you know, <laughs> yeah. you know, tried it. We thought it was so cool. What are the neighbors doing? Yeah, yeah. it's just coffee. It smells a little burnt. Yeah, in there. it's like meth lab. What's yeah. happening? And um, and so we we're like, what if we roasted our own coffee? And so um, so we started. All right, what would we need? We bought this tiny roaster. It was probably like five hundred dollars, and it was an electric roaster. We started, so we like launch our business. We're like, we're Luma Coffee. We make an Instagram. We make a logo, and we're like, you can order coffee from us. Yeah. And um, which was laughable <laughs> because now the roaster back. that we were roasting on, it took thirty minutes to roast half a bag of coffee. <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> It was not meant to like launch. Yeah. And so people would order like, you know, people who loved us were like, yeah, Yeah. I buy a bag and we start roasting coffee and it's like taking hours to to complete one order. And we're like, oh, okay. All right. What's, what are we doing? What are we doing? All right. So we, uh, we ended up getting like a business credit card and getting a, a bigger roaster. Devin, Devin is like extremely, um, he can build things and fix things and, and create. And so he built a mobile coffee cart and we, uh, we're like, all right, we'll do some like events to get our name out there. It ended up, we did an event at our church, which we had, you know, the mission is a rather large church and we did an event there and they asked us, Hey, could you keep it here for Sundays? And so we like, we had an opportunity to have it at a place in downtown as just kind of like a corner in their business. It was like the arts, it was right. the, the arts building. And, um, so we're like, all right, what do we do? You know, we, this could potentially be a good situation at the arts, the arts center, but also we know at the church, we're going to have people every Sunday coming through. Yeah. So we, we ultimately it landed and, and lived in the church for a few, for, from 2018 to when we, um, I mean, we still have a, a spot in the church that functions. And, uh, that was looking back such a pivotal part yeah. of the journey because people, started to learn our name, our product. We had like a proof of, of like proof of concept yeah. when we went to go to the bank, um, like a history of sales. Right. Let's say, are you selling it inside the church or yes. is it more yeah. so like ran? No, okay. no, it was like, it was, it was not a part of the church. We were like just in there Got it. and we, okay. we had like our point of sale and we sold coffee. Yeah. And, um, and so, yeah, we had that. And so when we, when we, when we started to Cause we, it had been a few years and we're like, all right, what are we doing? Where are we going with yeah, this? Yeah, like, right. are we just going to do this forever? Sure. We're just going to sell coffee online. Yeah. Like, what's this look like? And so we knew the dream was always to have a brick and mortar, right. you know? And, um, cause that was what the dream was. Like That's what we sparked were, it, right? We you want Hammond yeah. to have a really incredible yeah. experience, coffee experience. And, uh, so we had a lady in the church who was a real estate agent and she, we had like, Oh Shout yeah, well, that first yeah yeah, uh, <laughs> Stacy Levin. She's a big, huge part of the story, and um, 
and she we had no business the first time looking at property. We had her like go bring like can you show us properties? And was like <laughs> I'm sure at the time she was like, sure. Oh my God. Was we've just, all been little there. kids, yeah, friends. And, <laughs> yeah, kids. And, uh, but it had been a few years and she randomly reached out because our dream location was where we're at. It's the old, it's a, it's a historic pharmacy in Hammond called the Rexall pharmacy. And it was just, it fit all, it checked all the boxes. So cool. And so she, uh, it, it came like open for rent to lease it. And, um, she, remembered that we had mentioned it before and she's like, Hey, you know, I mentioned, you know, you guys and the owner, you know, would love to meet with you. And so, uh, we went and looked at it and the, we didn't have a really good feeling about the, who, the, who is owning it at that time, but we were like going to move forward and we were like trying to figure out everything we needed. Like what we didn't have a loan at this point. We hadn't any, again, we had no business even going this far because we had no idea what we were doing. And, um, which I feel like is a, as a reoccurring thing mm-hmm. in this story is like, wow, we do we ever really know <laughs> yeah. what we're doing? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, and this was January 2020. Yeah. And so oh, negotiations ended up falling through. We were devastated. Yeah. And then we all know what happened March 2020. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. And we were like, oh my God, God. This was the greatest thing that could have happened. Mm-hmm. Um, because we would have been opening, we would have been yeah. it just would have been horrible. Right. You know, we would have Y'all, I mean, you were all the lockdowns and everything. It just probably would have sunk us. Yeah. And um, so fast forward to um, like November or August of that year, August 2020, things are starting to open back up. In that time frame, the building had been sold. Mm. And she's like, hey, the building's under new ownership. I mentioned all again, the owner would love to meet with y'all. It might be a good fit. We go meet with the new owner. Immediately, we're like, this feels good. Yeah. This yeah. could happen. And uh we like start talking, negotiating price. And he's like, yeah, I can, yeah that works for me. And uh, we're like, okay, we like do a handshake deal. And we walk out and we're like, are we, st- Did we, just do that? <laughs> like, are we, st- are we starting a coffee shop? <laughs> so we're like, okay, well we need, we need money, we need capital. <laughs> like we need and to know, you know, all the things you don't know. And, um, and so is this good? I'm telling like the whole no, story. This is okay. amazing, it's awesome. man. I love this stuff. Yeah. And, uh, so we, we start getting to work. We go meet with, uh, through Southeastern, there's a, a small business, um, like sector of, of Southeastern that they do for free for anybody that is, wants it. You can go and meet with, and they'll help you make a business plan. They'll help you like get research for the market. And, um, it's an incredible resource. I don't Line know, if, up, I, man. Shout up Southeastern. I don't know if man. every campus has it, but it is a, is a yep. really incredible That's tool cool. in, in Hammond. And so we met with her and this is a really funny part of the story is where she's like, all right, I'll, I'll get y'all's business plan. Go in. Thank you for all this info. She's like, last question is like, can you send me your books? And I'm like, like, like my library books. And what do you mean? She's like, no, just like wherever you've tracked like your expenses and stuff, like your QuickBooks, send it over to me. She's like, y'all have books, right? And I'm like, yeah, we have books. Yeah, sure. yeah we have books. And uh, we leave, and I'm like, we've never, we've never kept track of anything. What's a book? My CPA asked me the same thing. No kidding. <laughs> so we, I leave there, and this is one of the like craziest parts of the story for me because it was me. Is so I, I'm like, all right. I need to have something to show. So I have this bank account, our business bank account that we've been doing business through. So I find this software that will take all of your statements. Oh, nice. And you can upload them and then, and then you, and it will upload it into QuickBooks. And so I spent, oh, like, I would say collectively probably like 60 hours, maybe more, like into the dead of night, multiple nights like going back three years yeah. and allocating each expense from our, our, wow. um, our statements into what, like, what was that for? What was this is right. income is expense to have a set of books yeah, to give to her. Awesome. Yeah. And, uh, and it was an insane amount of work. Yeah. And, uh, but it was one of those things where I was like, we're like, we're, there's a finish line. Like this could happen. Yeah. Like this is just a part of it, whatever it takes. And, uh, so it was like many hours. This was like before, this was before I had kids. So it was uh, like, a easier. what else am I doing? <laughs> yeah. And, um, and so, yeah, we, so we, we keep going down that road. We start figuring out, all right, what do we need? What kind of equipment, what kind yeah. of insurance, all like all the stuff you just don't know. Like, how do we pay taxes? Where do we like, what is, right. what is anything? Right. Um, and so we get down to it and our, uh, we were having a tr- we were having trouble finding a loan. Sure. So my bank to give us a loan and, it was extremely frustrating. Yeah. And um, a loan for the equipment, for job yeah, rate expenses, just like all our, stuff. Yeah, our business loan, mm-hmm. like yeah. to do everything. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we needed money to yeah buy a roaster, buy an espresso machine, yeah. all all the things, you know, furnish the place. And um, and Chase shot us down. Shout out to Chase or shout, 
shout, shout down. Chase. <laughs> and, um, and so we were like kind of freaking out because we'd already kind of agreed on this deal with yeah. our landlord. And then he starts asking like, Hey, let's sign the lease, you know? Let's, and we're like, we can't sign a lease. We don't have like, yeah, money, yeah. you know? Right. And so we ended up, um, through a connection at Gulf coast, which is a bank in, in Hammond. It's like mm-hmm. a local bank. Mm-hmm. And, um, they, uh, we had a connection there. The, like the loan off the chief loan officer, um, I ended up getting on a phone call with him, like sharing the vision, like, Hey, this is what we want to do. And uh, you know, this is what we're, this is the dream. It's like, all right. And, um, long story short, it, it ends up working out. We get the loan, but the craziest part is we, he was like, we had sent everything for the loan. He's like, looks good. You're going to get it. And, but the, our landlord set like a hard date. He was yeah. like, Hey, we need to sign the lease today or, or I'm going to have to start looking at other options. And it was the next day when we were going to get the, Answer. is the loan? Yeah. Like, is the loan getting approved? And so I was like, Devin, what do we do? Do we sign the lease? Like just, you know, on faith. Right. And, uh, and so I message our loan officer. He's like, I can't legally tell you that you're going to get approved, but it, you should, there's an, I don't see any reason that right. you won't. Right. And so we, me and Devin were like huddled around this little e-signature. Like we're like signing it via email and we're like, we let's submit it and we're like, let's do it. Uh, Bro, yeah, imagine that next 24 Dude, hours. Dude, it was crazy. It was wild. <laughs> yeah, it was wild. Uh, next day we get approved for the loan so cool, and man. it was like, all right, let's, let's do this thing. Yeah. Yeah, and then it incredible. was the, we thought it was going to happen in like four months. It happened in like nine months. Yeah. And, yeah, uh, usually. but that was the, that was the grind. Yeah. But so, then yeah. also a part, big part of that, and you probably, you may be covering this too, is there in Hammond, their location is the historic district. Mm-hmm. And so everything you have to do is double uh, and triple permitted. All and that, this all and, the tape, you know, you yeah. gotta, so yeah, Man. it was, you know, to get, get a logo on the window, you had to go, you had to submit something in the historic oh, district. Geez. You had to go to this meeting, they had to approve it. And it was just, yeah. it was wild. Yeah. Well, that's encouraging to me because I'm the type that I, I need to have everything checked off before I take that leap. Yeah. Right. But it seems like a lot of the story is you're just stepping out in faith and like, all right, yeah. we don't have it figured out, but we're going to figure it out as we go, which is a good, which is an incredible mindset yeah. that well, I need to work on. It was one of those where I'm like you and it was extremely difficult for me. Yeah. But like I said, Devin and Kat compliment me and my yes. wife so well because my wife is similar as they're like, like we'll figure like we can do it like we can do it and um and so yeah we just figured stuff out and we made mistakes of course you know there was plenty of mistakes but we um we made some really key good decisions along the way too with things like we hired a graphic designer we hired an interior designer and just really made some investments in areas because we got a tiny loan by the way (laughs) and uh, i I would imagine for a startup business and um and so we were like we had to be really strategic in how we were going to spend this money and make it work. And right. even in that, we didn't know what we were doing. Like when we opened, we had zero working capital. <laughs> like we spent our whole loan. Yeah. And yeah. now on the other side, opening up a second business, um, I'm like, well, that was wild. Like yeah, that's we not- didn't have money to like, we were banking that we were just going to have cash flow. <laughs> to be able to you pay know, your that it was going to work. Yes. Do what you I'm do. like, yeah. thank God yeah. that it worked out yeah, because we crazy, started man. with zero dollars in our checking account. Awesome. And, uh, Think, yeah. thankfully people started buying coffee so and cool, we were able man. to like pay our bills and yeah. pay our team and yeah. not. And you absolutely like through all of that, you guys did everything so well. It's so cool just to know you and be friends with you. Like the, the countless people that I see on Instagram that are like getting my coffee at Luma, just posting yeah. their stuff in aesthetically too. like yeah. how y'all have built that place to not just be a coffee shop, but a yeah. creative space. A third place. So I've been on this. I don't know if y'all ever heard the term third place. Uh-huh. <laughs> I don't, this, I could go the rest of the podcast talking about talking third about place. Yeah, yeah. It's a, uh, it's a socioeconomic term that was coined for a place that is not your home or your work, but it is a place where you go for strictly to be in a social environment. Oh, okay. And, um, and so there's been a steep decline in these since like the, um, I want to say like the seventies, they've just dramatically fallen off. And yeah. so traditional third places were like, think back when, a pharmacy, for instance, it wasn't just a Walgreens. Right. A pharmacy yeah. used to be like the soda shop. Yeah. Yeah. You would go there, you would, you know, get, you know, get a malt yeah. and it was like a social hub. Yeah. Yeah. The post office, you, yeah. you would go, you would get information about what was happening in the city. And, um, and I'm reading a good book right now called Bowling Alone, which is on this topic about how third places, how we just as a society don't value social right. currency like we yeah. used to. Mm-hmm. And, um, and so Th- Luma, we d- we taught a class on this last summer at a coffee um, expo, 
but third places are integral to our society. Like they, yeah. they are, yeah. they are becoming extinct. <clears throat> yeah. But we are seeing the effects of that yeah. in yeah. different areas of our our everyday right. life, and, and especially so, with young people. Like yeah. You see that they have that desire. Everybody yeah. thinks, oh, they'll just stick them in a corner and, and, and put a laptop yeah. in front of them and stuff like that. But no, like the desire for social interaction. Yeah. And then older generations are not getting it the same. And so yeah. you're right, those places have kind of gone. Yeah. And so that's what makes not only just good coffee, but the atmosphere yeah. and the environment as well. So like a lot of people thought we were crazy for opening up a coffee shop without a drive through. Right. And, uh, but it was like part of our, our model. Like we didn't want, we wanted it to be somewhere where you gathered. I like that. That's and, not your uh, demographic. Like yeah, the people, yeah. the, the places that have drive through, that's yeah. not, yeah, there's, you know, there's shops with it, you know, um, within five minutes yep. you can go there. This is, you know, this is, this is a part of what we want this to be is a, a place where people can gather yeah. And um, that's what it is. Like, you know, it is. It's a big part of what makes it special. Is we crafted it around like profit was never a driving force, and like we never did open Luma because we wanted to make money. Right. Like we never even like considered that. Right. It was always like, what? Well, like this would be so cool for Hammond. Yeah. yeah. And um, now that we're like two years in, now I'm like, okay, like I'm getting more like strategic with things. Right. Of like, okay, well, yeah, we, you know, we, what are things that we can bring up net yeah, profit, you know, like, the, like course. just yeah. stewarding that well. Yeah. Um, but it was never a part of like the inception of and like, I, we want to make a bunch of money. And I think it's kind of seen in y'all story of how you got to where you are today, because I think if money and profit was the driving factor behind it, you probably would have never got there. Yeah. Because like those points where it was like, do we sign this lease? Well, it didn't almost make sense. Yeah. yeah. Profit wise to sign that lease, but thank God you did because yeah. look at what's come after yeah. it. So it's, it's pretty uh, cool to see, man. I don't. There's a, there's a, a brewery in Hammond called Gnarly Barley, and yeah. um, I just I'm I'm such a huge fan of of them and their their owners. And I was talking to the owner of Gnarly Barley, and, and he was just sharing it's kind of the same inception, mm-hmm. kind of like this would be so cool for Hammond. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he was just like, yeah, the same the same kind of idea of like this would just be something that would be incredible for for Hammond. And I never once thought about like he's like I'm sure there are people that sell sell house you know sell one house a year and make more money than me. Right. But this is just something that I really just want it desperately Hammond to have. Yeah. And it's it's a really cool spot in Hammond and they opened up a like a food a food place across the street from right. it now. You can go and eat. Yeah. It's called Dine Nar. And so it's just <clears throat> you just see it. You know, yeah. you can see it in a business when it's it's you're not just trying to get bodies in and Correct. out, yep. but it's like Something this is somewhere. That. Yeah, it's huge, it's awesome. huge, man. Well, I'm sure through that and Red, I might be stealing your question here. No, you're good. Through that, there's been a lot of things, and you and I have kind of talked about some of them before. There's some things that once you opened that surprised you quite a bit. Yeah, <laughs> or some lessons that you learned that like maybe we didn't have ironed out yeah. in the first place. You want to share a little bit about maybe some of those things that surprised you, lessons that you learned when yeah, you guys ca- opened, things countless, like that. Yeah. So many different things. Um, and they range from like l- small and insignificant to like huge life lessons about, yeah. and I learned this about people. I learned, that, yeah. you know, right. and um, I immediately think just to our first, uh, our first like six weeks. And um, I jo- me and Devin joke about it with our um, team lead, Kaylee. She's been with us since we opened. Right. And, um, just like, man, we really had no idea what we were doing. Like we were, we just had, we had like all these systems, you know, sure. and we're like, yeah. okay, this is not going to work, right. you know? Right. And, um, and so learned a lot about systems. And I mean, if you've ever opened a business, you learn a lot about taxes. Oh my <laughs> and gosh, I'm like, the whole wow, how is this thing. legal? Yeah. Like, how can they take this much money yeah. from me? Yeah. And, uh, so that whole aspect, um, but I would say like on a, a deeper level, um, I think one of the most, uh, you just, learning what it how to be a boss Mm. like i never i still it feels weird to call myself a boss because we don't none of us are of the ownership see ourselves as bosses um but learning how to lead people in a a work environment because i had experience through ministry like i had you know volunteer teams for years and um from small ones to like larger ones um but it's different when you um, are employing people and yeah. you are responsible for their their livelihood, mm-hmm. and um, it just it's been the the I've done the most growth in learning what a huge responsibility and what an honor what an honor it right. is to be yeah. right. like to to steward that relationship with someone, and it's something that we all take a lot of pride in as mm-hmm. far as um, like I. 
we have great coffee. Like we, I know our coffee is good. Devin is our head roaster and he has, he just has a innate ability. Like he, yeah. our coffee is good. Right. Like I'm, you know, I'm not trying to flex. We have, we have <laughs> yeah. the best coffee yeah. there is. And, um, but I think if you were like, man, what's something you're, you're like, you feel like you, Luma does well, I would say we steward our team well. Right. And how we treat them, how Huge. we speak to them, yeah. how we honor them. And we, it's just not like, it never feels like a, like we're above them. Mm -hmm. It feels like we're all yeah. on the same level yep. and we're just like helping, we're helping assist them. Right. And, um, and I, th I think people feel that, I think that translates to Huge. the experience people have in Luma yeah. is we, the, the en enormous respect we have for mm -hmm. our team because the way that. that you somebody's workplace is just such a huge part of their life mm -hmm. the yeah. experience they have in a workplace specifically the relationship they have with their boss yep. mm -hmm. it can it can be an enjoyable experience or it can be one that is filled with a lot of of anxiety right like my deepest i never want it to lead in a way that when i walked into the shop my my team tensed up like my yeah. oh, yeah. boss is here yeah. and uh and it is so special to have created an environment where that is not the, right. that's not the reality, that's awesome. you know, where they, I want our team to feel like, okay, good back. You know, like, you know, if anything pops off, you know, the like good. my boss has got my back, exactly. you know, and, right. and that, that has been humbling, special, sweet. The, I mean, it's been one of the biggest honors of my life yeah. is being able to steward a team. It's huge. I yeah. think that's the biggest thing that I, I get from what you're saying is a lot of the things that I think you can take on. And sometimes it does take on as stress mm -hmm. and frustration and difficulty. It's But it's a badge of honor that we wear yeah. to be able to. Oh, yeah. There's, you, yeah. you know, there's we just went a couple stresses. weeks without a toilet and uh, it was <laughs> extremely <laughs> stressful. Yeah. yeah. And uh, that's just one of those like small business problems yeah. where you're like, oh, man, no restroom. People aren't going to come in here and stay because, you know. Right. Like giving somebody black coffee with no restroom is like that's like <laughs> it feels sin. it feels horrible. <laughs> it feels illegal. And um It's like you put a sign out by the cash register just so you know. Disclaimer. Before you take your first sip. <laughs> yeah. And uh and so awesome. that was stressful. And um but yeah, there's a, it is not without you know, the it's things the that you yeah, 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 there's things yeah. you gotta solve and figure but out it helps solutions. Keep you in perspective when you realize that man, what a badge of what an honor yeah. it is yeah. to hold that position you got. Yeah. So it makes those stressors yeah. become not the dominant thing. Yeah. It's huge. Yeah. Having someone, uh, I remember having a job in college at a gym and the the boss I had was the exact opposite. Everybody tensed up when mm -hmm. he got married. Yeah. I literally have PTSD and I'm 36 years old now from right. a college job of like, oh, if I see him, I'm probably going to tense up. Yeah. So, and I think, you know, starting a, a real estate team, that's one thing that I didn't really think when I started of like, all right, I'm going to be leading. Uh, I knew I'd be leading people, sure. but also in the sense of admin and employees, W2 yeah. employees, like that's a, that is a, something you don't think about of, right. of leading them in a way like this is their job. They're coming to you every single day. Yeah. So much time is spent with you. Are you leading them well? Are you stewarding them well? So and I'm sure you weren't thinking about that when y'all were in Nashville of like, let's start a call. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, All oh. the other stuff. Yeah. And uh, yeah. And you just, you know, there's a, there's a certain level of consistency that it's just like how a parent, you know, as a dad, like you, you don't want your, you don't want to be doing this with your, you know, right. they, yeah. they, there's that longing for consistency. Like yes. I know, I know what my dad's like, right. like I know yep. what I'm going to get. He's not one day hot, one day cold. Yep. And, um, and so it's similar with your it's team. Huge. Like I want them to see somebody that, is consistent, available, mm -hmm. and you know, sees them yeah. like really sees them and appreciates them. And we we do it in different ways because one thing is like you realize that you can say it's not about you know that quote like it's not about what you say but how you make mm -hmm. people feel. Mm -hmm. um, it's you can say you can say like hey I appreciate you. You can also throw money at it right. and like yeah. hey here's you know here here's a raise or here but that none of that matters if you if, if your team doesn't feel like you are consistent and they, they know what they're going to get, like they just, that goes that so is. much further yeah. than, than just saying like, Hey, appreciate you. Yep. Yep. Um, and it's, but it takes intentionality. I, I think it leads to what I was going to ask you next, but I think you kind of already answered it, but I've watched you, you know, on a stage communicate so well, but on a personal level communicate so well. And I think it's the same thing that makes, I think it's that consistency yeah. and the authenticity that allows you to communicate so well. But I guess if you want to just elaborate a little bit more on how, I guess, you stay consistent in even your communication yeah. and your ability to just 
you know, at home and in your business and all these different things, why is that so important to carry over into different areas of your yeah. life? And it's, it's changed so much through the years. Like I think as a young, uh, like as a young youth pastor that had just started and had an idea of, man, this is how, like, you know, you see like what, who you consider to be like great communicators yeah, right, and it's easy right. to like, I need to do it like that. Yeah. And, um, and I think I got to a point with myself over the years specifically in, in ministry, um, where I, I just had to, I had to figure out exactly who I was. Yeah. And, um, and even if that That's was good. different than who I used to be. Right. Um, and so I had to like, who, what's my voice, you know, the, when I prepared, you know, messages still, you know, when I go into them, I'm obviously, I want to communicate something I feel like the Lord has, has, has given me, but how I communicate that has gone from, all right, I need to package this in a way that people want to hear like it's going to sound good. It's going to look good to now pivoting and just like, I want to be as Logan as I possibly can. Yeah. And, um, and so it shifted dramatically, I would say in the past two years specifically, just like from, um, from how I spoke two years ago to how I speak now. And, um, kids will do that to you a little bit. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And, and so, yeah, when I sit down with T, yeah, when I'm, when I'm with my team, I never try to put on like a, like a, yeah, like a, like a front Mm -hmm. or, you know, an illusion. It's like, I like being honest with my team. Like my kids, you know, like if I had a hard morning, I'm like, man, it's been a hard morning. Yeah. And you know, I might be quiet for a little bit, but let me, let me sit down and drink my coffee. And then, (laughs) you know, but I just try to be honest and, um, and consistent with, you know, with them and yeah, yeah, with my family, with, you know, with, with the business, you know, specifically talking about the bathroom going out, like that was stressful. Yeah. And so you just have to be cognizant when like, when I pull up at the driveway to get home, yeah. I'm like, okay, this isn't that big a deal in the grand scheme. Like <laughs> what I'm about to do right now is the biggest, yeah, the biggest deal of my life huge. is, uh, this next few hours that I'm about to play. Yeah. Like this is everything. Yeah. 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 Um, bathroom will be okay. Consistency builds commitment yeah. from people. And so that, I think that's why your team buys in. That's why even your family buys in. It's like, they know what to expect from dad. They know what to expect from their boss. Yeah. It's like, okay, well yeah, we come in, we're not walking on eggshells to see what to expect. Yeah. Yeah. And then it's, and then it's, it's just all, like you said, it's just being authentic. Mm-hmm. You know, they know that, they're not going to be behind me in a booth somewhere and they're going to hear me like yelling at my waitress, you know, <laughs> yeah, like they, yeah. they, there's that history that we've built with them that they know like, Hey, this is really, we really do expect, we do really care about you as, yeah, as team members. Yeah. And even some of the language, like we don't call them a staff or employees. We call them team member, you know, yeah, it's just it's like, big. just yeah. like a few like little language things too, that are important to us. It's and, huge. You know, it, it, it matters and it adds up. For yeah. sure. It's a big deal. Kind of transition. Well, mentioning family and yeah. small business problems. So you're pulled in so many different directions and especially as a business owner uh, and even in ministry, like two yeah. of the most demanding jobs mm-hmm. of, of just time. You can't really structure. Okay. I'm going to do this nine to five. Things are going to come up. Um, but obviously the, the theme of this podcast in general is like, we want to do things well, but our family is over all of that. So how do you feel like you prioritize and make sure you prioritize your family over that? And yeah. not saying you have it all figured out, yeah. give that disclaimer, but nope. what's some things you kind of do in that regard? Um, I don't, and it, I don't want it to sound over like simplistic, but I like when I get home, I, I guess maybe maybe I've just worked on it throughout the years. I would say probably those first six months open in Luma, probably not as good. And even right. definitely the first few years of ministry. Um, but when I like pull up in my driveway, it's like I caught, like I I think every time like like this is this is the honor of my life. What what I'm about to do, good, and so man. like I don't I don't respond to texts, you know, unless it's an emergency. Yeah. Um, but even that, like I'm talking about emergencies, not yeah. like this is urgent. Like if it. I, I, I pretty I shut it down, you know, yeah. I, I do. And, um, I'm not perfect. Do not get it right. Sure. You know, there are times when I'm like, Oh man, somebody's, you know, our opener tomorrow called out. Okay. Well, this is, this is an emergency because yeah, I mean, yeah. the shop won't be open. And, um, but I think just through the years, um, realizing that it's, it's going to be okay. Like everything's mm-hmm. going to be okay. Yeah. Like yeah. nothing's like Luma's not going to burn down. Um, that test, that text message will still be there tomorrow. That's right. And, um, and yeah, I just, I just love being a dad and a husband Mm -hmm. uh, so much. And, um, and I, y'all probably been there where I'm like, I don't see how people don't love this. I don't like, I I don't, I, I, I cannot mentally go there in my mind because to me, it's the greatest. It's the greatest. I think it's just an inadequacy thing. They're like, okay, well, I don't think I can be a good husband. I don't think I could be a good dad. 
in one thing we've talked about, and we just talked about it on kind of the last stop episode we shot, it's like, but it's like we're not. Yeah, we mess up all the time, but mm-hmm. it's the effort, yeah. and it's the wearing it as a badge of honor. Yeah, it's like, man, I, I mean, that's where you nailed it. Like just saying, like, well, it's when I pull up in the driveway. It's like, no, this is the best yeah, part of my day. It's the best, and when I leave in the mornings, I'm like, this is the this is the best job in the world. You yeah. know, like like seeing my, you know, like looking at my kids as I'm backing out. I'm like. I can't wait to get home. Yeah. Um, and it's good perspective because there's plenty of times in the morning when I leave, I'm like, that was extremely stressful. And sure. if you don't have that mindset of yeah. this is an honor, it's going to be a stressful day. <laughs> That's yeah. right. That's right. I need to take that on when I'm yes. about to go to these sleepless nights with the third. So, uh, and I think you have to like, like fight against that. Like you can always be doing more for your business. Like yeah. you can, there's yeah. always something that you can be doing yeah. to like, you know, make more money. Or, and I think some people justify the time away from their family, like, oh, I'm setting them up for the future. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing. Sure. Um, but I think, I think you ask any kid or, you know, even, you, you know, like later on in their life, like, what would you have rather? Would you have rather your dad been home at four every day or your college paid off? I, I don't know. I, I hope that I'm, I parent in a way that like 10 out of 10 would rather my dad than home. Yeah. 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 I think anybody ask answering that question authentically would say it's the time a hundred percent. Yeah. And that's what we talk about all the time is like, you know, you're trading things in the, in, in the name of, I want to provide for my family. I want to do these different things. And it's like, but, but what are we forsaking to get that? Yeah. Yeah. You know, that, that financial provision, but we're missing out on actually, the time that you can't get back. Yeah. yeah. You hear it all the time on, on the deathbed conversations mm-hmm. of like, what would you wish you would have done more? And nobody's going to say, I really wish I would have worked more, right. went to the office more. Right. Yeah. You know, it's like, yeah, but you don't remember that till that no. moment. It's like, yeah. man, in the minute, like yeah. right now with what's going on, it uh, helps keep those priorities in check. Absolutely. It's huge, man. Well, um, I think as we kind of start to lay in the plane here, so many people, have had that thought on the way home from Nashville, like your friends did, like, man, let's open a coffee shop yeah, mm-hmm. or just, but whatever it is, even if it's not a coffee shop, if it's like, man, it's let's write that book, you know, let's start that business. Let's, let's, you know, take this leap of faith. What would be a few tips or just some advice that you would share for somebody who's like, no, I, I need to reignite that dream again that I had, or they got something right now that they're like, I, I need to take that leap of faith, whatever yeah. it is. I think um, one of the biggest like just assessing why that dream exists. And um, like the, um, is it Simon Sinek that yeah, I yeah. Think that start with why? Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, but assessing the motive behind the dream. It's good. Because if it is something that is surface level, um, then I would abandon it. Hmm. Like you need to, you need to pursue something that, 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 that awakens a deep why mm-hmm. on the inside of you That's that good, is man. that is driven behind some type of core value as opposed to you know this will be profitable or this will you know this will you know make lots of money or whatever or this will look good this will make somebody happy um and i think that is cuz that is what you're going to have to like pull from and feed from That's when, it, when it gets hard you. oh yeah. yeah you know yeah um you know when those those late nights when i was backlogging <laughs> years, years worth of 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 tedious of tedious and i got halfway done and i messed up and had to start over too. Uh. Yeah. and because uh, i had no idea what i was doing yeah. and um but i wasn't like on the at the end of this there's a big paycheck waiting on yeah, me. you know yeah, what i mean yeah, it just was not it was, even that wasn't the it, was, it was nowhere in my psyche <laughs> yeah. and uh and likewise it wasn't like it wasn't pride either like man at the end of this people are gonna be like wow look y'all did it it was like it's truly true this will be so incredible for Hammond. Mm -hmm. Like this will be so cool. And I didn't even think about now it reaches beyond Hammond. Like, you know, people from Denham, you know, know, it's, that was like, that's crazy to me that people drive in to come to our coffee shop. And, um, but that's where I, that's the advice I would give somebody like, is this something that when it gets rough, it's, it's a deep enough dream to where you can pull from that and, and mm-hmm. keep going. Or is it something where it's like when it's going to get hard and you've invested all this time, it's like, oh, I don't even really, I don't even really believe in this. I don't even really want to do this. Bro, that's good. And you, uh, you abandon it. And, um, and yeah, I think you, you just have to be honest with mm-hmm. yourself. Mm-hmm. And, um, especially now when there's so much pressure 
from, you know, social media and, and you just see people doing things and you want to be like, I want to do something big. Like, yeah. I want to do something cool. I want to, you know, I want that lifestyle or whatever it looks yeah. like. Um, just being, being able to recognize like, okay, that is, that's probably not a pure motive. I need right. to like, what actually sparks yeah. something in me. And, yeah. um, and maybe it's not opening a business. Maybe right. it is, it's, it's, maybe it's, teaching young people really resonates with something deep inside of you. Maybe you know, that's, that's your call. Like that's, that's what you need yeah. to pursue. Yeah. Um, even though that the business that in your mind that you're starting may be more profitable than being a school teacher, mm -hmm. you know, but it's at the end of the day, it's not going to be worth it. Yep. It's just going to be, it's going to be draining yep. for you. Or maybe that dream is <laughs> to be the dad, to be mm -hmm. the husband yeah. that you haven't wanted to be yeah. or that you haven't been. And it's exactly that. Yeah. It's like, why? Mm -hmm. Why would you want to do that? Yeah. And so that's going to sustain you. Like for me, I have a business partner. Right. And so if, if we didn't have a partnership, this would probably be too much for me. Yeah. It, I couldn't justify what it would probably take mm -hmm. away from my family. Um, and so, yeah, that's something else to consider. Like yep. if you, will this, will you be sacrificing that dream of being a really great dad mm -hmm. because you, you get two years into this thing and then you have to keep it floating because it's, it's so much yeah. Yeah. and you end up wasting 15 years of your life trying to keep that thing afloat. It's, it's huge. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> it, uh, man, it touched me because, you know, I, I think about even somebody in the midst of it, like man, trying to build a brokerage, trying to build a company and things like that. Well, initially, the motive can start off pure and good because mm -hmm. it's a why bigger than that. But then when it takes years and you get in the midst of it, you kind of resort back to, well, man, how the, you know, the finances and all that different stuff. So just kind of going back yeah. to the basics of why we did this in the first place. Mm -hmm. That's such a good reminder. Because you're going to hit those walls. It's inevitable. Yeah. It's not oh, like yeah. the dream right. is going to be like all smooth sailing. They right. require some uncomfortable and hard things, and you're going to hit that wall. So you're right. If you, if you don't have anything to fall back to of like, why am I doing this? Because I think a lot of people, too, they confuse their dream with they just want to get away from something else. Yes. Yeah. It's not really the dream. It's just an escape, right? Yes. Yeah. But truly That's true, grappling right? to what you said. Like, hey, do I want to be my own boss because I, I I have, like, an inability to serve somebody else? Like, yeah. is that, you know, is yeah. it rooted in something like I just can't work for someone, so I need to start my own thing, mm -hmm. do my own thing? Is there something really deep inside that it's like another – there's actually, so, like, a root – issue yeah. in there that mm -hmm. you need to like resolve or work out. Um, but yeah, that's a good point. Or the glamorization, like you said, social media, yeah. they see, Ooh, they're doing something cool. I want to do something cool too. That's right. Well, like if you take social media away, you're still going to be fulfilled in yeah. what, what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. That's good, man. Yeah. Huge, awesome. dude. <laughs> Logan, that was uh really good stuff. Bro. Love it, man. <laughs> yeah. Thank I mean, you. <laughs> I think in the middle of you telling a story about how you did the business, it was less about like a playbook of X and uh, X's and O's. And we had all these things figured out. I mean, it was inspirational for regardless of what somebody's going through. Um, man, it was encouraging. That was I appreciate stuff. it, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. rapid fire? Yeah, let's end this with some <laughs> lighthearted stuff. Yeah, let's get it. You want to go first or you want me to? Uh, I can go. Okay. Uh, we talked a little bit before about how your wife's family and y'all, like, love Disney, right? My wife's family. I wouldn't say you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> my wife and my wife's family. Okay, good. Mm. Wife and wife. Well, then, man, this may answer the question. You have a week okay. completely paid for you and the family at Disney or a week for you and the family completely on an all-inclusive. What do you choose? All-inclusive. Okay, easy. That easy. was just too easy. I think I... Oof. What would Shelby say? We've got a lot I of Disney Shelby, listeners, so be careful. I think Shelby would say Disney, yeah, honestly. yeah. yeah. Cause it's just inner, yeah. You yeah, know, she, yeah, she was bred. Yeah. She was bred to be a Disney. Right. You know, it's like they. That I don't even know how many times my wife's been growing That's up. Wild, you know, man. she's been so many times. Yeah, and um, but it's. I think it's really special to my father in law. Like yeah. I think he mm -hmm. he really has such sweet memories. You know, with his with his right. kids there, and then right. now with his grandkids. So honestly, it would be one of those things where it's like, if. Is the whole family go like did my extended you know like my cousins or they all go into yeah, sure because I would apply want, both for either yeah honestly if I really if it came down to making the decision I would probably want the all inclusive but I would probably end up doing the Disney trip because <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I know my kids would be like it would be those memories exactly. like, yeah yeah so, it's magical yeah. man it is it's a special place I'm a Disney guy too yeah so I'm like if I'm going all inclusive I probably want to go without my kids I, <laughs> <laughs> I hear That's you on fair. that you know for sure. Sure. Well, my rapid fire, I'm going the coffee route. Me right. and Brandon earlier were fighting about who gets the coffee question. But um, so if you could only drink one 
style of, I guess, style mm-hmm, yeah. or brood method or whatever of, of choice for the rest of your life, what would it be? Yeah. I pretty much only drink one thing anyway. Okay. So, there you yeah, go. so cool. I, my go-to drink is a Cortado. <sighs> A macchiato, kind of similar, right? Yeah, macchiato yeah. is just a little bit less milk. Yeah, no idea what y'all are saying. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and so I uh, at Luma, we we have two grinders. And so if you ever go into Luma, um, you can get our, our like house blend, mm-hmm. which is an Ethiopian and a Guatemalan coffee, or you can get a single origin. Mm-hmm. So it'll be usually like something from, you know, like an Ethiopian coffee. So cool. And uh, the single origin, it'll be a little bit brighter. It'll have like more acidity. You'll be able to get those fruit notes. Um, mm-hmm. It's a little bit of an upcharge because it's a, it's a more expensive yep. coffee. Mm-hmm. And so my, my go-to order is a, is a Cortado with whatever is on the single origin that day. Love and it. Uh, so, so cool. my team is like, that's like one of the cool, like some of the perks of being like yeah, owning yeah. a coffee shop or like <laughs> going in and like, like Kaylee specifically, she'll, uh, or Kenna, if I walk in, like they'll start making me a drink. And I'm Heck, like, yeah. if, you know, it's like, nice, nah, it's cool. Yeah, you know, that's it's awesome. Like, that's awesome. They're like, you want your, your usual? And I'm like, yeah. And they whip it up and it's like, you don't have to pay for it. And uh-huh. I, mean, I guess I am paying for it. <laughs> Paid, in one way I've another. paid into it, yeah. And, uh, so cool. But yeah, Cortado for sure. That's nice. I'll have to get that next time I go. That's a good answer. So from a coffee shop owner perspective, are you guys kind of – so sometimes I'll go and order a macchiato from a, a place like yours, and they have to classify, like, I just want you to know this is mm-hmm. a – because I guess Starbucks has the – yeah the non-traditional the caramel macchiato yeah it's actually in our training material yep. of like okay. a uh, we give like a, a a script of like this is probably how this conversation is going to play out yeah. you know it's like oh do you want a traditional macchiato with it, which is just espresso and a little bit of milk or did you want like more of a Starbucks caramel macchiato and usually 90% of the time they're like probably 99% of the time oh yeah I want the, the like the caramel like this oh, it's like oh, okay yeah yeah that'd gotcha. be more like a for our version, it would be a vanilla latte with caramel on it. And Got like, it. Oh, okay, yeah, all right. That's right. what I want. I used to get asked that so many times. I was be not offended, but I'm like, yes. Yeah, so like, what else is there? Because I never got <laughs> the macchiato know. from Starbucks. Sure. Yeah. yeah, a yeah. small fraction of people drink macchiatos. Because I mean, I'll mess with them and I'll say, yeah, extra whip. That's what I want. And they're like, yeah. no, well, no. I'm like, just kidding. I, <laughs> I don't want that. <laughs> well, uh, before we close, do you want to tease a little bit about Luma's next uh, business oh, yeah, yeah. or y'all's so, next business and what you're doing? Yeah, we had I had a. I left a meeting about it and drove straight here. So yeah, we, uh, hopefully in the next two months, we'll be opening up a, um, a specialty grocery store Ooh, and, um, cool. it'll be small. It's not going to be, you know, it's not going to be a, a large, going to no, yeah, right. <laughs> um, but it'll be, I guess you consider it like a, a boutique specialty, um, grocery store. It'll be two storefronts down from Luma. It'll be called salt provisions. Nice. And, um, we'll have local produce, local dairy, local eggs, and, also like an assortment of like specialty snacks from, Sweet. you know, around, you know, small businesses around United States, but also the world. And, um, so like picture, like, like, like ramen, but not top ramen, but like some like niche specialty yeah. brand, right. that, you know, like uh-huh. they make this really nice box right. of ramen right. and, yeah. um, and different kinds of salts, like all like truffle salt. Yeah. All that. And, uh, and, but the back half of that building will move our roaster from the front uh, of the shop uh, nice. and it'll, it'll give us, if we, if we continue to expand our wholesale side of Luma, it'll give us room to do that. If we need to get a bigger roaster, we're maxed out at the shop, yeah. right. but this space will give us room to, to get a bigger roaster. And, um, cause that's an area of Luma that we really want to grow in is our wholesale. wholesale side. Yeah. Like yeah. you own a, you own a, a law firm and you, you buy coffee. We want it to be Luma, you yeah. know? And, uh, and so, yeah, that's, that's been a, a big project too. You know, it's like, so we, sure. I thought after Luma, like, okay, we know what we're doing now sure. and you just still don't, <laughs> yeah, you have yeah, no yeah. idea what you're doing. Yeah, you forgot totally everything. Yeah. You forgot all the stuff you learned. Yeah. And so, yeah, we thought this was going to be open in August and, uh, and you know, here we are. So yeah. yeah. Hopefully by the summer we'll have it open. Well, listen, and if you've tuned in, you know, you maybe you've probably been to Luma before, but if you haven't, take the trip. Like if you're not from Hammond. Yeah, we'd love to have you. Yeah, Courtney and I love just taking a little trip to Hammond. Mm-hmm. And, and they got all kinds of different stuff. Like you said, the Renaissance in Hammond. Yeah. I mean, we need to get some of that over our way. But I know. you got some really special stuff going on there. So go check out Luma. Provi- salt provisions coming yep. soon. All that. So it's some pretty awesome stuff. Yep. Follow us on Instagram. Yes. We, you know, yes. We have a really good social media person. She she kills it. Abby. Shout out to Abby. She Thank posted you. a really funny uh, video yesterday. So, dude, yeah. y'all's inspiration for what was that style video you did? The Wes Anderson. Oh, bro, oh, yeah. Wes Anderson. That was yeah. like, yeah, that was crazy. Epic, that shout out to Eric Eric McLahan, and he owns Lid Lid Media. He um he does all our video work, and uh, we did a podcast with him. Uh, 
about a month, maybe two months ago. And he is so talented. If you ever need video work, anything like that, he is, he is incredible, but he, yeah, he, he had the idea of doing the Wes Anderson and then Devin extremely creative as well had the idea to do it differently because ours yeah. was a little bit different than the mm. traditional just like kind of yeah. picture to picture. We had right, like, yeah. a, you were like following along. It was, right. it was cool. It was so fun. So awesome. cool. And uh, yeah, that was, that was interesting. Cool, man. It's it's legit, cool. man. Yeah, for sure. For well, sure. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much for giving us your time. Yeah, man. I appreciate Coming it. Over from Hammond. Y'all go follow Logan. Go follow Luma. Um, yeah, hope you guys got some value out of, out of it. I know I did. I'm going to yeah, be listening too. to it again. Right. Kind of take some notes and get some inspiration. I've been inspired to, to dream a little more. Yeah, so we get too. bogged down in the business a lot. So it's it's, it's a good refresher yeah. for sure. Um, so yeah, anything else? That's it. Anything? Awesome. No, cool. I appreciate it. Cool. Thank you so Thank much. You, yeah. Appreciate well, y'all, we'll see you next time. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. See you later.